Hello, everyone. I'm Angie Jones, the head of developer relations for TBD, the newest business unit at Block. If you haven't heard of Block, it's probably because we just recently changed our name, but we're the company that made Square and Cash App. But enough about me. I'm here today to talk about code reviews. Have you ever gone on the roller coaster ride where you pour your heart and soul into your code? You feel really proud of yourself once you're done. You submit it for code review only to be met with comments that are harsh or blunt and sometimes downright rude. Yes. So many of us can relate to this deflating experience. The fact of the matter is that code reviews are a form of feedback, but they often lack the thoughtfulness that would be exercised if critiquing someone on anything else. In trying to make every code reviewer be polite and thoughtful, is a feat I simply don't have the energy to take on, friends. I realized long ago that I can't change people's actions, but I do have control over my reactions. So I've taken a different approach and it's worked marvelously on every team that I've ever been a part of. I present to you my 10 commandments for navigating code reviews. Commandment number one is thou shall not take it personally. You can get nasty review comments for various reasons. And let's be honest and start with the obvious one. Some people are just jerks, right? Some people aren't necessarily jer jerks, but they're not trying to be mean, but they lack the social skills to be able to give feedback in a constructive way. Some people, they thrive on power, right? They love having the authority to say ship or no ship. Some people, they pride themselves on being brutally honest and they don't think that their messages need to be softened. And then some people, have biases that color the way they see you. A study of GitHub code reviews show that people are way more critical of code when they know it's submitted by a woman. And trust me, as a Black woman programmer, I've certainly gotten my fair share of rude and patronizing comments when joining a new team, whether that be a corporate team or open source. But wondering if I'm getting this comment because I'm a woman or because I'm black or a combination of both <laughs> will only stress me out. And I imagine other underrepresented demographics may have these same thoughts, right? I know a lot of junior developers who do as well. But here's the thing. Dwelling on why you're getting code review messages that are rude, in my opinion, is a waste of time and energy. You'll only become further frustrated. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that this sort of treatment is in any way cool, but I also don't think fighting each of these reviewers head on is going to result in the change that we want to see. We'll be the ones who are exhausted and feeling like an outcast while the meanies are sleeping peacefully at night. So to save my own sanity, I give every commenter the benefit of the doubt. And I assume their comment is directed to the code and not me. The second commandment is thou shall not marry the code. So one way to avoid taking things personally is not to become attached or married to this code, right? And I know, I know how much of ourselves we invest into the code we write. 
We pour our time and our energy into what we create, and that passion is great. But if you truly want to commit the best solution possible, you have to be willing to accept that maybe, just maybe, the best solution is not the one you submitted. Gasp, I know. Let's look at an example, though. So here's an exchange in a given code review. The reviewer says, this is complex for no good reason. You don't have to show off. Less is more. And the submitter responds, this is not me showing off. It's a complex problem and thus warrants a complex solution. And the reviewer says, you can accomplish this same thing with a single while loop. And then the reviewer responds, my solution works just as well. You know, I really worked hard on this. Sad face emoji. Now let's take a step back here. When someone looks at this, you, the submitter, are the one who looks emotional and defensive. The rudeness of the reviewer's comments is overshadowed by the submitter's attachment to this solution. And if anyone calls you out on this, you're gonna feel even more frustrated and possibly even ambushed, right? So commandment number three says, thou shall consider all feedback. Once you've learned to detach yourself, it becomes a lot easier to actually hear what the reviewers are trying to say, right? You avoid going through the torture in your head of why are they being mean to me? Is it because I'm fill in the blank? I can't tell you how much stress this helps you avoid, right? You can now read past the bluntness of the comment and you can see what point they're trying to make, right? You're now free to truly consider it. Is what they're suggesting actually a better solution? And if it is, you thank them and you make the change. So when the reviewer says you can accomplish the same thing with a single while wow loop, the submitter can say something like, good point. That would be cleaner and remove some of the complexity. Let me rework this. Now, doesn't that sound much better, right? There's no ego. There's no emotions in this. There's no attachment to the code. It's very much so given team player who wants what's best for the business. And that's how you want to be perceived. Now, having said that, let me acknowledge that more times than not, you probably do have the most optimal solution to the problem you're solving, right? The fourth commandment is thou shalt articulate your rationale. So when someone suggests that you should change your code, don't automatically assume that that person is right. You have worked on this for hours, maybe days, right? And the reviewer is throwing ideas out there after having seen this for only a couple of minutes. So you want to consider the reviewer's suggestion if you haven't already, but if you feel like yours is better, then you articulate why. And I want you to do this right there in the code review because you want the other reviewers to know how thorough you are as well. So when they say you can accomplish this same thing with a single while wow loop, then the reply could be, yeah, I initially thought the same thing, but I have to also iterate through the list. So that led me to this solution, which handles all cases. Let me tell you, I've seen the rudest people change their tune after I make such a statement right? I've now earned their respect. I've proven that I'm just as smart as they are, right? Because I originally had the same idea that they did. And you know what? 
I may be a bit smarter than they are because I've considered something that they haven't. So this is a sure way to get people to ease off in your future reviews. They now trust that you know what you're doing. You have demonstrated that you are thoughtful and you don't just jump to obvious solutions, but you weigh the pros and the cons of multiple solutions and you choose the most optimal one. That is promotion material right there, folks, right? You're showing you're about this life for real and you know what you are doing. Good for you. Now, let's say that you have considered their recommendation and you know that that's not the best solution, but they don't think your solution is the best either. I don't want you to get into a heated back and forth exchange, right? Because the fifth commandment is thou shalt be willing to compromise. So after a few messages, if you cannot come to an agreement, it's time to step away from the code review. What you don't want is to get into a heated exchange that's being recorded in the code review system for all to examine, right? Again, it's possible to come off as defensive and argumentative from the outside looking in, and that's certainly not what we want for you. Obviously, in a case like this, Async communication isn't the best approach, right? So you can offer to collaborate offline on the solution. So when you said, okay, yeah, I thought about that and I went with my approach anyway, then they might come back and say, well, there has to be a simpler approach than this. Then you can say something like, you know, you see it's getting a little heated. You say something like, well, look, I'm all for the simplest approach possible. Let me find some time on your calendar so that we can whiteboard this out. Perfect. You didn't crumble and just take their solution, but you also didn't get emotional because why you are not married to this code. Mm -hmm. You're essentially saying, I don't agree, but I'm willing to work together on a solution that we both will be happy with, right? And most people will respect and appreciate that. And if we're being honest, once you detach from the code, you submit this code to the repository, it's no longer yours anyway, right? This is now team's property and everyone has ownership of this. Other people may need to refactor it. They'll certainly need to read it. And so you want something that everyone is comfortable with, not just something that you're comfortable with, right? Now, when you get together with this person to whiteboard it out, um, you're both looking at the problem. You're looking at the proposed solution together. So in those instances, you're more likely to understand where the other party is coming from. And moments like these lead to some great collaborative and innovative solutions. So don't be afraid of this. All right. Commandment number six says, thou shalt contribute to others' code reviews. If you're always the submitter and never the reviewer, you're going to be perceived as more junior than you probably are. Think about it. The people who are most respected on projects, including the ones that you work on, these are the ones who are frequently reviewing other people's code, right? And honestly, it doesn't even matter if the submitter is more senior than you are. In fact, that's even better. Think how powerful you become when you're able to help them see something that they didn't see before or you introduce them to a new technique, right? This is instant dev cred. And this isn't even that far-fetched really, you know? Experienced folks learn how to do things a certain way. And many times they aren't up to date with the newer and modern approaches, right? Because they're no longer studying that. They feel like that's something they've already mastered. But you might be, familiar with the newer modern approaches because you learned it more recently. So this is your opportunity 
to teach an old dog new tricks, so to speak. Every time junior developers correct me or suggest something in my code, I am so impressed, right? Even if they're incorrect, <laughs> having the courage to speak up is a great trait. It's very admirable, okay? Now, having said that, I don't want you to make comments just to make them. You don't want to add noise to the code reviews, right? So in the event when you really don't have any feedback, that's okay too. I still want you to participate. But make sure that you still try to get something out of your effort. For example, if you're consistently reviewing pull requests, this allows you to see other coding styles, other coding techniques, right? Which in turn, this can make you a stronger programmer and make you more knowledgeable about the code base that you're working on. You start learning how the entire system works together, right? Then you're able to see and, and speak on things beyond just your component, right? You'll learn where things are, such as uh, the utility methods, which uh, might be used for multiple components. So this will give you more great things to contribute in future reviews. For example, you may see someone um, code something that already exists in the code base. Well, now you can point that out, right? Or if it's new code that might be useful as a reusable utility, now you can suggest that. Or maybe it's coded in a way that conflicts with the team's conventions. Well, now you're well-versed in team conventions because you've been exposed to all of these various parts of the repo. So you can point that out. See how much there is to gain? So this is an excellent, excellent way to level up, right? People will start singing your praises, Oh, such and such, they know the code so well, they know where everything is. This is a great way to get promoted. All right. Number seven says, thou shall treat submitters how thou wants to be treated. When you're reviewing code, remember not to take on the same attitudes that you dislike, right? Just because someone is brutal when making comments doesn't mean that you have to stoop to their level. And I know this sounds obvious, but y'all, I have witnessed levels of pettiness that adults <laughs> simply should not possess. So if someone just ripped you apart in your code review, it could be really tempting to return the favor when you see one of their pull requests come through. Don't do it, friends. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Be the bigger person. Stay true to who you are, right? Comment on their review the way you would like others to comment on yours. And who knows? Maybe your charm and your professionalism will rub off on them. Number eight says, thou shall not be intimidated by the number of comments. So it's super easy to feel like a total amateur when you have a review with tons of comments. And things get even worse when there's multiple comments from multiple people. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This doesn't look great. But I don't want you to count yourself out. Remember, it's just cold, right? Don't take it personally. And if you're new to the project or it's a new language or something like that, simply chalk it up as a learning opportunity, right? You're going to go through each of the comments, review them. You'll defend the solutions that you believe are right. You're going to accept the ones that are better. And the key here is to communicate. So I had to do a project in Swift. And I never used that language before. So my first few submissions were riddled <laughs> with code review comments, even from people who were junior to me. 
And I was not only new to that team, I was new to the company as well. So I hadn't yet established a reputation there. And it was very important to me that I didn't become labeled as, you know, the emotional woman who doesn't know what she's doing. So I explained my rationale, but in a non-defensive way. So the reviewer says, why didn't you just make the functions argument optional and set it to a default value? And then my response was something like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. We don't have that option in Java. I'll make this change and read a bit more about it as well. So this shows you're grateful for their help, right? It shows that you're not clueless. You're just used to another language. And more importantly, it shows that you're willing to learn more, which is great. All right. Commandment nine says, thou shall not repeat the same mistakes. Listen, nothing annoys reviewers more than having to tell a person the same thing over and over again. I've seen co-reviews become nastier and nastier when this happens. In fact, I was on a team once and um, this woman on the team, she was amazing, very sharp. You really wanted her to review your code, right? Because you wanted to get her approval. And there were a couple of team members where she refused to review their code reviews anymore. And when I asked her why not, she said it was just so frustrating because she keeps having to tell them the same things over and over again. And it just makes her frustrated. It makes her angry. She doesn't like how she's responding to them. And it just ruins her day. So she stopped reviewing their code. And that's not what you want. You don't want to get to that point. So when you accept someone's recommendation and you make the change to your code, I want you to take a moment and internalize why you accepted the recommendation. There's a lesson in there. And this goes back to making sure you're not blindly accepting recommendations just to get people off your back, right? Um, and to get the pull requests accepted. If you are doing this, you may not be processing the why. And the why is the lesson. Once you understand the why, you're not likely to make that same mistake in the future. So if you get comments and the reviewers are not explaining why they're making the recommendation, be sure to ask, okay? And when you're reviewing other people's code, you always wanna provide the rationale. I always do this if I say, you should change this because, right? You always want to give them the why, because when they see that same thing again, maybe in a different form, they remember the lesson, right? So when a reviewer tells you something once and you immediately start incorporating it in your future submissions, people will realize that you are sharp, right? They only have to tell you something once and you get it. They have no choice but to respect that. The final commandment is to embrace the nits. So there are people who seem like major nitpickers. Their only comments to you are about misspellings or, you know, trivial things that your linter didn't catch. If you have gotten to this point, I want you to pat yourself on the back. Congratulations, my friend. You've actually managed to write code that your team has no problem with fundamentally. Remember, we don't take it personally. Don't roll your eyes and say, such and such always has to say something. <laughs> Trust me, such and such respects your work and probably just has an eagle eye. Just fix the stupid typo and keep it moving, okay? So there you have it, folks. These 10 commandments are the gospel according to Angie. I keep them with me on 
every team that I work with and they've not failed me yet. And I've been doing this for quite a long time now. These commandments have helped me go from newbie contributor to well-respected contributor in just a matter of weeks. It doesn't take long at all. I hope that they work for you as well. Thank you so much.